They marched up the beaches of Guadalcanal and Bougainville, marched into North Africa. They marched right into Sicily. Marched... Hey, uh, wait a minute, hold it. Why, you're giving out with the idea that all we do in the infantry is march. But uh, somewhere between... Uh, hip, ting, hip, ho. Well, somewhere we've become more than marching. We're modern day specialists. Well, you certainly helped the Nazis hightail it out of Sicily and Rome, too. But it was our Air Force that climbed up a couple of miles of clouds and cut loose with the first load of arguments to convince them that fascism doesn't pay. Well, the artillery helped. Don't forget our armored troops. They rolled right into the thick of it, did some tall convincing of their own. But uh, everybody knows it's the infantry that has to say the last word in this argument. We go in and tell it personally. There's nothing in front of us but the enemy. You might say, we're the men in no man's land. Good name for the infantry. The men in no man's land. It sure takes guts to walk in there shooting. But uh, we don't just walk in and start shooting. Now, there's no man's land, San Pietro, Italy. The Nazis were there a long time ahead of us. Plenty long enough to dig in solid. The first move we make, they cut loose. We hug the ground and start talking. With BARs and machine guns. Don't forget the 81 millimeter mortars. Their crews are really special. You know, you don't just aim an 81 at the enemy. Its fire's got to be plotted and plotted right. Does the training you got back home help you much? You mean like keep your tail down, make yourself part of the terrain, not a bump on it? Well, brother, it's thanks to keeping low and taking advantage of every inch of cover that we're able to wipe out the forward Nazi guard positions and move in close. Attacking that town head on must have meant a lot of casualties. That's why we didn't attack head on. We went at them from the side. You mean you outflanked them? And what a flank. We had to climb straight up a mountain. And that's another place where training comes in handy. You know that when you're silhouetted against that skyline right on top of a mountain, you're a clay pigeon. You know that you've got to take advantage of the ground wherever you are. And if you get nicked, it doesn't make much difference whether it was a bullet or a rock splinter that kicked up like shrapnel. This is where you went on that patrol, isn't it? Yeah. From the military crest of that hill, the part just below the top, and the highest point that's safe on any mountain, an officer points out to us the route towards the enemy line. We've got to get some vital information or we can't move in. Men on these patrols must be experts in map reading, right? Well, they've sure got to know how to get where they want to get, and back, and they got to know what they saw and where they saw it. Don't forget, their reports have got to be written with absolute accuracy or they're not worth much. Right again. And we're always on the lookout for camouflaged gun emplacements and machine gun nests. Patrol reports the enemy's flank is weaker than the center. We move up. And taking advantage of the woods, close in. Four out of five dig in to cover our advance. In that way, we move forward protected by constant fire. And we really give it to those rats. With rifles, BARs and mortars. Planting a phosphorus grenade does the most good. Knocking the buzzards right out of their nests. Grenades slung on every loop. Bayonets fixed and ready means infighting. 
And when the Nazis move out, their communiques will say they evacuated the position. Oh, boy, what a laugh. They'll mean the infantry blasted them out. And then we move in and mop up. Now we capture a house and know how to use them. And we take particular care that muzzle blast don't give away the position. And if we get a gun stoppage, one thing we can't do is call on ordnance. When the belt feed lever goes bad, we call on ourselves. We've been trained to know every piece of equipment we handle. And now this piece of land, this shattered town, is ours because the infantry moved in and took it. The infantry has made it another milestone along the great highway that leads to the end of this war. A highway along which they'll fight every yard of the way. They'll move on to newer battlefields. And wherever they stand, that land is free again. Free of the Nazis' shame and terror. They're the infantry. The guys who go in and tell it to the Nazis personally. The men in no man's land. The modern day specialists who are going to trudge and crawl across Europe carrying victory and liberation in their knapsacks.